kind of hear you, Jenny. For God's sake, I did it again, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I always do that. I always do that. I always do it. But welcome to another Saturday night of Shadow Whispers in the night. We have my co-host, Mr. Chris Mule with us. I could never say your surname properly. It's, you can hear something. You actually said it right. It's it's Mule. It's actually right. Everybody thinks it's Mole, right? But it's actually Mule. <laughs> and it's actually my great, great grandparents were French. And it's actually Mule is French for muscle. For what? For muscle? Yeah. Mule, mule is actually French for muscle. It, and see if you go see if you go into like France and say mule like that, do give you muscle. Again, it's, you don't want oh, in the sea. Seafood. No, nah, seafood. Not this. Seafood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right there. Uh, there's no uh, uh quick 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 hi out to a few guys here. Stephanie, how's it going? Are you well? Hey. We have dots, dots with the crackers. Um oh, you've got your tea dots. Huh? He drinks tea. He drinks a lot of tea when he comes on bald and bonkers. He's like, you Irish tea. Won't have a cup of tea now. You wouldn't be yeah. Irish if you weren't having a cup of tea. So we have a fantastic guest on with us tonight. We have Haunted Era on with us tonight. We have Shane and Nat with us. Shane is known as the Irish Bear Grills. Am I saying it right, Shane? Can you hear me? You see me at the bottom? Can you see me? There's Pamela. Hi, Pamela. How are you? So we're going to bring Shane and Nat on with us. Good evening. How are you? Hey. Can you hear us? Hi, guys. How are you doing? Not too bad. That's why I think. I'm hopefully nervous. Good, good, good. Really? What did you say? You're nervous. We'll go easy. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Um, that's what I'm saying. That like you are known as I the Irish Bear Grills. <laughs> There's a little delay, slight little delay in it, but we'll catch up. Yeah, has to get, has to get across the sea, then come back, and then across the sea again. Oh, huh? well, Which it's coming mean? to Scotland, and then it's coming back to Ireland again. That's it really. See, yeah. uh, Stephanie's saying I'm in the hospital here until at least Monday. Hope you're okay, Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie. I get better soon. Hi, uh, hi, Miss. Is she all right? Uh, I think she had a. I'll, I'll tell you after what was wrong with her. I don't want everybody to know what was wrong with her. I'll tell you. Yeah. I think she had a. I'll tell you after what was wrong with her. It's just me. Sorry. Sorry. There he is. Anyways, <sighs> welcome to Shadow Whispers in the Night. It's your first time here with us. Looking forward to it. Um, We're going to start. Oh, oh, there's Jillian. How are you? Once I see how he is, I know it's Jillian. I they didn't see it until I saw you. <laughs> I get that quite a lot. See the, the Facebook user thing, even although if I put my name on and I click on the yeah. links. Oh, yeah, Jillian, how are you doing? It does that. What does it do? It just keeps saying I'm a Facebook user. Strange. I I don't know why it is. I don't know why. Um so welcome, Shane and Nat. Welcome. Oh. Tonight, um, we were talking earlier on uh, about a few of the locations. Sorry, thanks for having us on. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Sorry, there's a wee delay here, but we'll kind of. I'll take it slower. Um, we were talking earlier on about uh, Shane is a demonologist. Um, about locations as well, and I'm interested in Malahide Castle. We're just giving it a second, seven second delay here. Yeah, okay, well, you love Malahide, don't you? I Nathan? love Malahide. Yeah, I can't wait. Did you did you investigate Malahide Castle? Yeah, I can't wait to get back to Malahide, and um, we're hoping to book it again soon. Yeah, we did. Um, I think we did it twice. Twice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now. On one of the recce's, uh, the walk force before we went to do the investigation, mm-hmm. um, we came home and that night, uh, I think it was about like two or three in the morning, our daughter came in to us and she says, "Mom, there's um, there's after being this guy standing in the doorway." And I said, what? She told it was our Daniel. He would have been the same age, you know, at that time, about 21, 22. 
Um, and she said he was just standing in the doorway, in her bedroom doorway. He had a white shirt on and she could see like a big blood stain on his chest. And I said, you, like, that must have been for skin. Mm. Dairy and all this, you know, I was mm. saying, but um, looking back on all the history of the goats from Alaska, who were after bringing home mm. with us, he was um murdered on his wedding night or oh. wedding day, and he was stabbed in the chest. So, you reckon it could have been him? Not too sure, but. Mm. It sounded like him. There's lots of it ghosts, like so in Malahide, Puck, um, the dwarf. Um, yeah. So, Could have been. so he, so he, it Who sounded knows? like him. And he would have, <laughs> I know, it sounded like him and he would have followed you home. So how did you kind of tell him to go back, basically? Well, that was it. He just appeared to Shanna and that was it. Nothing else. Okay. And why would he, he follow gone. you home? Yeah, I, I, I think he, he left it alone. Well, with but that's really the only the only um, experience like that that we've ever brought anything back with us, we reckon. Maybe hope. <laughs> In all the years, you? like about seven years well, it was the only time we brought something back from an investigation. It, it's it's not the only time we brought something back from a private case. Uh, there was one private case we were working on a couple of years ago. And uh, as you know, I, I'm quite skeptic, but there's certain things that you can't deny. And uh, we came home and anyhow, later on that night, uh, a, a large volume of blue bottles uh, found its way into the ceiling of, of our hall upstairs. It, I mean, hundreds of them. Really? Uh, up, and the same night we came home from this particular private case, a case which I can, I, I can discuss later on, yeah. Okay. Okay, that would be brilliant. Because I, I, it's, I seen a blue bottle here a few days ago, and it was just the same day that I took this doll in. And then... Um. <laughs> I was only joking when I sent you the message. I, I, I nearly sent you the, the, the picture of the Amityville window with the blue bottles. I know, and I don't know why it was here. I don't know why it's here. What were you in October? I keep saying it's November. Um, can you talk a bit? Oh, look at the baby. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, the face. I can't even deal with the face. It rubs the lotion onto the skin. <laughs> The in the basket. <laughs> the dog gets it. Oh god! Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. And then I say, "I'm taking the dog." <laughs> oh god! So, um, what is it about Malahide that look at Shane in the basket? <laughs> put the put the lotion in the basket. Rub it in. Rub it in. <laughs> it's gorgeous. What's his name? What's her name or his name? I think my dog has dementia. Mm. I do think he has a wee bit of dementia. Oh, I've got it sometimes, too. <laughs> so I want to I want to ask you, Shane, about uh, your demonology, your demonologist. What made you want to become a demonologist? Yeah, so, yeah, so demonology, um, I suppose what I'm most interested in, in terms of paranormal, I, I, I uh, have, have a great interest in doing private cases, and I've done a lot of private cases myself. I've done a lot of private cases. So typically, uh, uh, my profession is that of a photojournalist. So it made sense that I would properly photograph private houses. And when we go to a private house, we would photograph in, in raw uh, digital files. And I would also photograph it in film at the same time. So I'm trying to replicate the same image per room throughout the house in, in the anticipation that should I capture something that is going to cross-corroborate 
uh, mm-hmm. one another because it's one thing to find something in, on a jpeg or on your phone or whatever but when you're photographing in, in a raw mm-hmm. file that it mm-hmm. is a very very large uh, even though you may have an anomaly you have nothing to cross in film and it comes out in a print and it also comes out negative and pretty much stand that up if you capture something like that so my interest then uh, goes into the psychology of people we were meeting while we go into these private houses because there's a whole lot of things that you have to discount when you go to a private case and, and there's no judgment involved they're trying to get to the bottom and i suppose what we're trying to do was help people out it's not about facebook likes or clicks so most of the product yeah. they're never even uh, you know about facebook page because it's not about that and um, so obviously then being a skeptic and I, when i say i'm a skeptic i have to highlight the fact that although i'm a skeptic i'm not a cynic there's quite a difference between the two and i i, I certainly believe uh, that there are energies out there and i also believe that you know a, a positive life must be when it's past this life and the same too for a negative energy so um i had to study demonology to try and get a full idea of okay so sorry it was just there was a delay there so quite a bad one hi a wee bit um can you talk about any of your work as a demonologist, can you talk about any of your work that you have done? Yeah, so it's funny because for me being a demonologist, I'm non-religious, uh, but that, that's not to say that the people that, that I go to help or that we go to help don't have a great faith in religion and, and if religion works for you it's really really good um really fun ideas and most of the cases that we have dealt with there has been um either a psychological reason behind most of the cases mm-hmm. or else there has been some form of substance abuse going on in the homes and and that's still like i mean uh, i have to be fair and be honest because I think that a big problem that we have in the paranormal world right now is everybody and every paranormal team yeah. are constantly having uh, paranormal experiences. Mm-hmm. And the paranormal societies combined are doing a huge one investigators out there. And, you know, I, 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 I do feel that. So, but that said, that um, really would turn a, 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 a cynic never mind a skeptic into into somebody that would have to start rubbing their chin now th- there was one case we did on a, on a house a few years ago just before covid and um, we went out to this lady very nice lady having a lot of problems in her home and she genuinely was so what we do we, we firstly conduct an interview and we we run through all the p- possibilities of what could be going on and we always say hey, uh, Here's a, a task cam. Put this task cam in, in the area in your home that you feel is the most active and most likely to have uh, occurrences going on. And she did that. So we conducted our interview and, and we had a cup of tea with her or whatever. We were there for about 40 minutes, maybe an hour. And we went home and Natalie reviewed the, the task cam uh, recording. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, she came up. I was actually gone to bed and she came up to me. <laughs> and she running. said, she came up running so when Natalie is running, that's usually something paranormal. And uh, she came over to me and she said, listen to this. So anyhow, any manipulation directly as and it was so identifiable that we knew what the dog it was. We knew it was like Buddy here, our precious. And uh, we knew what it was like. Now, we we the house that we went into she had spent a huge amount of money it was a triple glazed house it was passive in the middle of winter you could have uh, you know maintained the, the temperature of this house with be like candle mm-hmm. it was absolutely passive i mean if you started a harley Davidson outside her hall door you wouldn't hear it in the kitchen that's 
the way it was. So we knew, and she didn't have a dog. So we knew that under no, no circumstances was this any kind of uh, contamination. So anyhow, Natalie got on to her the next day and we discovered, lo and behold, uh, that she did have a Dijon Freeze dog. And that dog was murdered in a house, was stabbed to death and thrown into a bin. Now, yeah. we didn't know any of this information beforehand. And that information we were able to send on the EVPs and she was absolutely uh, shocked at that. Now, that was, for me, that was you know really, really bizarre. So mm -hmm. obviously that warranted further investigation. So myself, Natalie and Liam went to uh, a continued investigation in the house a couple of weeks later. And lo and behold, we went out and we were recording uh, on the EVP on the task cam again. We were in the kitchen and maybe 20 feet from where we were to the left is the sitting room. And I, Natalie and Liam heard a huge loud noise, you know, a, a, a crashing noise. So we went in and we didn't, we all said, like, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, we didn't know what it was. <laughs> Lo and behold, and you know how sensitive these task cams are. Yeah. When we mm -hmm. listened to that recording back, it never appeared on the task cam, even though we heard this. I mm. uh, um, yeah. That was for me a really, really standout occasion. All the, these things happening together. Now we, we recorded other EVPs there as well, and we, we, which I wouldn't say were were great EVPs, but they were definitely a point of interest. But that EVP of, of the dog yelp was absolutely, it was insane. That's just so, um, yeah. oh my goodness, to hear the dog yelp on audio, uh, break my heart. Knowing what no. happened, it would have broken my heart if, to hear the dog yelp. Um, and, and to be stabbed and oh. thrown into the bin. That's... Mm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just, sorry. And what, what you must understand with that situation, we had no uh, existing knowledge uh, yeah. that she had a dog. Um, th this had happened years beforehand. And for us, yeah. they had actually go on the phone and tell her what breed of dog it was. You know, it, it wasn't, you know, where sometimes you hear EVPs and um, you want to be sort of a magician to actually try and figure it out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then once you figure it out, everybody can hear it because, you know, you let other people pay. It was the only way I the dog was there. That's crazy. Can you hear? Oh, no, I can hear you now. Sorry, it was just breaking up a wee bit. Can you hear? Oh, no. I can hear myself. Yeah, <laughs> it was very upsetting to hear, and it was also it was, it was very scary. You know, when you're listening at night time, it was like about one or oh. two in the morning, and then you hear this. I just said, "God!" Oh, I ran up the stairs, and I told Daisy. Can you imagine the fright that Natalie got listening to that? Been full of wine, and her oh. husband's upstairs in bed snoring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do the. I know. Last week I was doing audio, and my daughter came in and seen me asleep on the table. Still going. I'm still. I. I. I swear to God, I'm still going. Um, over audio. I'm still going over audio stuff. From no. Alabama. Well, no, when we were in the Hellfire Club, um, <laughs> we did get a few things from there. We did get a few things from that night when we were in the Hellfire Club. Mm -hmm. We still, we got, uh, I think Louise had something on video, on I can't remember. I know she mailed me, but we had a female voice coming through. And then we had a male voice at the end telling us, telling us to leave. Oh. I, I know. And then yeah. when we were there. And so did it say leave or did it say get, get out? What did it say? Get out. Um, I think it was two words. Oh, it was F U actually. It was F U. I have it. I have it up on the Emerald page, but I do have to. <laughs> yeah, I said F U because yeah. I know I was calling out earlier on in the night. And um, when we were downstairs, and then the REM pod went off upstairs. The night we were all there, and then the, the REM pod went off upstairs. And um, 
But we are, we want to go back. There's a lot more that I want to do in there. We, we were there until we were there until by three in the morning, and then it was torrential rain when we were leaving. And I forgot I left my body camera on, and we we're walking down the hill, and it was torrential rain, and um, I I almost did the splits. <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> I almost did, yeah. And please, the language out of us walking down that hill. I will, I will say that there is there is a bat where you captured. I think it was Louise captured that there is a bat where she like pans the camera around. A bat. And for a split, for a split second, I'm sure I seen like a white face just looking through the doorway, just for a split second. Aye, a few people. Uh, there is there's something there. There's something as if it's wearing like a cloak. I don't know if that's what, I, I, what at the Hellfire Club. How did they dress at the Hellfire Club? Did they wear like cloaks? How did they dress at the Hellfire Club? I let Natalie and Shane answer that. Yeah, well, there would yeah. have been cloaks and followed on. Very scantily, I think. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to go back. Um, we want to go back and do like, more. I would have spent a lot of time going. Up and down to the house. Yeah, I know you because you 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 guys are I would say experts in the Hellfire Club. I know I've been there a few times, but um to you know a lot about the place. I know when I went up there a few weeks ago and we all had met up, um I kind of got stuck into the questions about you know telling William, you know, was it no it wasn't William, it was another guy. That you know about a gentleman club, but and I and I'll use the word gentleman very loosely because you were anything but gentleman. And then the REM pod upstairs went off, so then we got the night started. <laughs> but it's it's hard when you have people coming and going and coming and going from Lep Castle. Oh, this is I know this is Gillian. Never bother going up that hill unless I was um, in a horse. <laughs> 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 Here's yeah. a thing I've always wondered like, about. <laughs> I, um, I probably, I, I don't know how many times I've been at the Hellfire Club. I, from where I'm from, it's not that far away. I'm Wicklow here, and it's not that far away. And when I was in my mid teens, I, I, I used to go for a club on my little motorbike, and I used to bring my two two rifle. I'd stay with a few rabbits and stuff like that. So I, I was never afraid of the Hellfire Club, and I really personally never had. Any strange paranormal experiences in in Hellfire Club but I did have a, a very very abnormal experience which I, I can tell you the story now uh, maybe you've heard it before but it, like I mean I would say mid mid 90s maybe 90 I was probably about 23 95 1995 and um, I, I was at a party one night with a friend of mine and uh, we won't name him just to protect him. So I was yeah. at a party with Damien, and uh, <laughs> we we decided that the party was crap, and we go on a spin on the bikes to the Hellfire Club. So up we went to the Hellfire Club about three o'clock in the morning, and uh, I got off the Harley, he got off his bike, and we started walking down the the past the main gate. Now it was a little bit by, different then, and it was more uh, heavily forested. And okay. back in the day, if there's any young people watching here, we didn't actually have iPhones, we didn't have Nokia's, what we had was a Zippo lighter, that was the only form of illumination yeah. we had, and yeah. if you're going along with a Zippo lighter, after a period of time, it's it it'll singe the hand, uh -huh. so you can imagine two bikers, three o'clock in the morning, now there was a uh, there was no drink or drugs taken that, uh, on on this particular occasion, but uh, we started hear, hearing noises. Now, Damien said to me, "He said, do you think they're deer? Now, you know, I'm a deer hunter. I knew that they weren't a deer." I said, "No." Yeah. I said, "I think they're human." And lo and behold, we could hear a kind of a humming. I suppose is the best way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And you know, about three thirty in the morning, Damien and said to me like he said man this is really fucking weird uh we need to get out here he said where he says he said you know something bad has happened here we hear the ruffling and the, the move and the breaking of twigs and i would say there was maybe 12 people what? and they were surrounding us 
So you could hear the noise yeah. starting to surround us. So this is how bad it is. You can imagine two burly bikers at fire club at three o'clock in the morning, right? And one guy turns around and he says, Shane, hold my hand. Okay, that's how bad it is. Okay, that's, you know, you hear a biker saying something like that, you've got serious shit. <laughs> Funny how we got into there. And he's never been balanced. Was it paranormal? I don't know. It was definitely really, really, really weird. And uh, what was it? I don't know. But, but I think it was. I think it was human, you know. But it was a strange night, and that was one of the most abnormal experiences I've ever had. That's See, it's, it's scary going up because you don't know who will be there, or you don't know who will arrive. You know, it is. It is a little scary. See that you know, in the chat. In the chat there, Jenny, Jenny, there's somebody saying about uh, the Hellfire Club will be closed off. They're going to be making it into an attraction. So that means yeah. you'll have to pay to get into it, and you'll not be allowed to do much. No. Nope. Unless you have the old Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We don't, we don't know when that is, is taking place, but it is taking place, which is unfortunate yeah. because there was petitions and petitions to kind of keep it as it is, and it bloody well should be kept the way it is, but money talks. But that's what happens. That's what's happened in Scotland. That's what happened in the Hellfire Club in Scotland. It was part of the obviously underground section, and now you have to pay to get in. You know that they do that. You won't be able to go at night time. But what I wanted to do, and I know that it will close off eventually. But I want what I wanted to do was do the Hellfire Club, and then you have the Hellfire Club in the UK, and then you have the Hellfire Club in Scotland. Yes. So I wanted to do all three Hellfire clubs on the same night at the same time and ask the same questions. Mm, I want to organise that before uh, before it closes off. Just to see, just to see, you know, curiosity and all of that. Um, nope. this, anything that falls There's into the Pete. category. Pete. Pete. Anything that falls into the category of what the hell is paranormal until it is shown to be normal, natural. Yeah. There was another question up here. I think this, I'm not too sure if this is Gillian. Where is the best place you have investigated? Ooh. Just going to explain anyone who came in, there's a seven That's second delay. Yeah. God, I don't know. Uh, like, I mean, I, I, I really like the Hellfire because I just like going up there. And um, I, I would say that uh, I probably think that the weirdest place that we've ever investigated is Massey's Woods across the road from the Hellfire. And, uh, you know, uh, I would, I, I have spent a lot of time on my own in the woods, you know, at Massey's Woods is strange. No doubt about it. It's the only woods that I've ever been in and I would the end and I wouldn't be a huge fan. And it's a point in it where the where it's like the energy changes in it. I'd like to go over there. I know yeah. we were at the hellfire yeah, I have we left to go down on the ground. I just start to get in these palpitations. And uh, the only other place I have sorry, there's a bit of a oh, lag in it. There is a bit of lag. Yeah, the only other place that's happened to me is over in uh, the Hellfire with the palpitations. But um, I like Lep. Seeing you in Lep last night, Jenny. Very Did good. You? We enjoyed it, didn't we? Yeah, it was very good. Hey, oh, my God. Mm. That's an interesting <laughs> question. Faye. That's an interesting question, Faye. Yeah, Son of the Naked Bigfoot. I love it. Jenny. Good. Say that again, Nash. No, it was my favourite episode so far. Was it? Was it? It was brilliant. Up in the bloody... Yeah, it was brilliant up in the bloody chapel. I watched it last night and even because I didn't see the investigation, but I was kind of like when when they did the rampart with the SLS camera and I'm kind of a little bit, you know, with the SLS. But when I seen it touching the rampart, and I was sitting here and my friend Anthony was here. He used to be on my team yeah, and we were watching him from Dublin. And when he seen me on the TV, he goes, Jenny, Jenny, oh my God. And I'm like, shut the fuck 
I can't hear me. I can't hear myself on the TV. He goes, you're going to have Canada calling you. You're going to have America calling you. Said, two minutes. Two minutes on the bloody show. Two minutes. Holy crap. But um, it was it was good. I loved I loved all of them. I loved all of them. I did like last one. Last night, though, oh. <laughs> I must admit the, the the show last night yeah. was very good. I did enjoy it, but I've actually got a question for you. It's a, I've always wondered. this. see the Hellfire Club at the Hellfire Club. What obviously they were obviously they were doing rituals to like Satan, but did they have any particular demon that they worshipped? Did they Ooh. have any? Like, yeah, was there any like higher up demon? That they worship at the club. Mm. Okay, well, I think we got like about a tenth of that sentence. What was it? What did, what were they actually worshiping at the club? Well, what? it was the devil. Yeah. That, that's basically what they were worshiping. Yeah, I, yeah, I said, I said and, that like, the cat. Ah. But there's a bit of a delay. There's um what I, what I meant was obviously they were worshiping Satan, right? But mm. did they have Sorry, the a particular just... demon that they worshipped? Because I know there's different demons out there and different demons and different levels of demons. Mm. So did they have a different? Did they have a certain demon that they would worship? Or was it just Lucifer that they worshipped? I don't know. I don't know about that one now. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I genuinely don't know the answer to that because, um, like, it, uh, the, the information that we have about what actually went on up there is still very, mm. like, it's still very secretive mm. to this day. And, um, mm. like, I suppose... Mm. Uh, I don't know what they were worshiping up there, but I do know that whatever practices that that they were carrying out, that they were very and very evil. So I think the practices, if they're dark and evil, will automatically uh, uh, find uh, a good um, evil spirit or evil. Evil entity or evil demon attached to that. Like I mean, I think wherever there is an abundance of negativity and something like that, should the Third Reich is a prime example of that. I I'd like to go to Massey's grave. No, uh, Massey's words. Uh, this Massey's isn't all bad. Yes, there are black masses among other nefarious things that take place there, but some are benign pagan rituals that also take place there. And I've passed Matthew's Woods many times, but I haven't gone into it. But I will now. As Matthew's Woods, I've never heard that. Yeah. Like, uh, I think one thing that we have... I think what we have to bear in mind, too, about that general area, and I think that there is a connection between Matthew's Woods and the Hellfire Club, and I think maybe whatever used to go on in, in the Hellfire Club no longer goes on there because it has it, it's such a draw to people to go there and they go across the road into Massey's, Massey's Woods, which is only across the road, but it's still the, the same general area. But we, we have to remember that it's it's not all uh, a fable what we believe uh, in the extent that when Philip Cairns, a uh, uh, six, uh, the, the special branch guard enough that they put a number of guards up in the hell for three o'clock in the morning and his Participating uh, a ritualistic, uh, a potential ritualistic sacrifice was going to go on at a particular moon. There has to be some credibility to this matter over, over historically to mm. warrant a number of armed special branch guardy outside the Hellfire Club at three o'clock in the morning. You know, uh, mm. obviously that, that that sacrifice didn't take place at that point in time, but. What information must they have been privy to to warrant to have them there in the first place? Ah, no, hmm. that's mad. 
I've never heard of the Matthews Woods, uh, uh, Jenny. What's that? Is that is that straight across for the the Hellfire Club? Why is why is it haunted? Why is the woods haunted? Is that why is that? I'm just letting that and Shane here. Well, it's it's my understanding. Uh, doing a little bit of research on it, that the Matthews Woods has actually uh, proven uh, uh, on research should be quite a hot spot for suicide. Now, oh. I don't know if there is this kind of scenario, like when we discussed, you know, earlier on about psycho spheres and stuff like that. If there is uh, kind of a, a, an energy that's left in a place where people go mm -hmm. to commit suicide, that should someone go that's extremely melancholy. Uh, mm. walk down by that way and it, it might seem like a plan at that point in time who knows like i mean the, the thing about this and uh, and my mind is very very open with a lot of this stuff even though i always say that i'm a skeptic like i mean we, we that, uh when we press the button on a remote control that there is a sufficient energy there that we can't see that changes the, the channel on the television or changes the volume and the, the, i believe that all around us there's a whole myriad of these kind of of energies that we're not tuned into and and maybe some of us are capable to tune into them so really and truly we, we the book must be kept open with all these ideas and possibilities because what i always say if it's not impossible it is possible true yeah true true, true. It, it's true what you say about Lay, I see ley lines. I've, like somebody said in the chat there about ley lines. I think it was Dots that said that uh, actually, Jenny, was it? Yep. That I have noticed that on ley lines, I don't know about in Ireland because I've not been to Ireland for a long time, but in, uh, in Scotland, in Scotland, they've built a lot of like standing stones always on the ley lines, which I find mm -hmm. interesting because if you to go back thousands of years to when they built those stones. You make you wonder how they knew the land lines were there, right? So that they must have had a, a way of finding them. Obviously, they maybe had like I don't know, saying sorcerers or that people that knew where the ley lines were. They were maybe gifted, and they could sense where the ley lines were. I mean, if you take Loch, if you take Loch Ness, Loch Ness has got multiple ley lines running through it, and You've obviously you've got Alistair Crowley's house up, up on the hill. That's where he does kind of magical stuff and that. But then you've got like Nessie and things like that too. But the castle's one one of the most in the world. But it makes you wonder: is the ley lines giving everything energy? Like you say that we are energy. So maybe we're getting charged up. The spirits are using that energy to appear. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And at the end of the day, what is a ley line? It's a, it's only really a point of interest of a particular energy and yes. whatever whatever you want to, to kind of cross corroborate that energy with. And I believe that, uh, you know, we, we have become so civilized now that uh, we've lost uh, uh, so many of our instincts that, the that we... Rods. Yeah. The dows and rods would pick up the, the ley lines. Yeah. And also Charleville Castle. Lines, yeah, but like, the, I I feel that we've lost so many instincts. Uh, yeah. Uh, through, through... So I'm just uh, just sunning the naked Bigfoot. There's sometimes something showed them the ley lines, but it, 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 I, obviously, if you to go back to a primitive, when we were primitive, I mean really primitive, like 3,000, 4,000 years ago, mm -hmm. when we actually used the energies to work with. Not like nowadays where we've got technology doing GPS showing us where the ley lines are and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But there was people like sorcerers or there was people like white witches and stuff like that that knew where the ley lines were and they knew how to use them. To maybe enhance their abilities to do god knows what mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting because that because that always comes back to like the haunted house side of things where people build like yeah. a house on a ley line and then they start getting weird poltergeist activity but that's yeah. something i was actually going to ask you shane what's what's your opinion on poltergeist activity do you think do you think it's got something to do with like say like children in the house that are maybe giving off a weird type of energy 
Or do you think it's something more like the ley lines itself? And it's just encouraging the spirits already there. Yeah, uh, well, I've had a lot of private cases that we've gone and done that would be say poltergeist type activity, mm -hmm. and we we go into the place, and this could be a house that, uh, and this is what makes me think that this is a, 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 a human interaction. On a human energy interaction because the house pre the previous owners may have had no experiences whatsoever in it and the previous owners before that had no issues and me believe it's not an issue of ley lines in in this particular case but you go in and you see that you have um uh, you know a, 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 an emo teenager or something like that that hates their parents yes. or whatever i'm just using that as a funny example but the reality is that i feel that adolescents are are, are creating such amounts of yeah. of uh, alpha and omega uh, type uh, energies that mm -hmm. whatever is there that needs to feed off that will feed off that mm. and mm -hmm. it's I, like I, a beacon yeah I think. And, mm -hmm. and i also believe like, and this is just my personal experience that you know any of the houses that i have seen this poltergeist type activity there has been trouble with with, with adolescent teenagers in the home yeah. or there has mm -hmm. been marital trouble or couple trouble or Fine. whatever yep. or right. or a bereavement, between bereavement then causes all of the other two problems as well usually but what there is is there's a mass a, a mass dump yeah. in the house of bad energy and there, and that bad energy gets an opportunity to manifest as yep. mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, yeah and, and this has been my experience doing, doing private cases oh oh gosh i i'm i when just when you were saying that um like i have a moody i've got two moody girls <laughs> they are moody but the film polar guy stuff in my house is me <laughs> because one of the both of them are hormonal and moody and then i manifest into the wicked mom because of the canal shut up um but then you know, there was a like separation in my house and so on and there was things happening in my house I don't think it was negative, but there was a lot of, you know, disturbances and uprooting and whatever in my home a few years ago. And I knew I could, there was things happening and shows that I was doing. You hear a man saying my name. I have that video. When I was doing a show and it was in America and there was about six people on the panel and we were all talking crap and whatever. And then one of the ladies was talking and said something and I laughed. And then you'll hear Jenny. And I'm kind of smiling, then I stopped and I'm kind of like, and I'm looking at all of the panel to say, like, did nobody hear that? And it was from my home. It was this man trying yeah. to always get my attention. Always trying to yeah. get my attention. But I, that's kind of calmed down now. Who's that? All right, yeah. Dave. <laughs> that's Jen. I don't know. Well, Dave, uh, Dave, like, can... like, I mean, I have... I think that's Jillian. <laughs> I've said to people when we've gone in to do cases where there might be poltergeist activity and people go, well, they think that they're not emanating a particular negative energy. But the, the reality of it is, like, I mean, there's, there's no neutrality in energy. It's either a positive or a negative. And although I think that they may not be given negative energy, if, if, if they're not producing a positive energy, then the, the alternative has to be negative. And it, 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 it is enough. Like, I mean, we, it's very hard without the assistance of, of particular medication, if you're going through a, a turbulent time in your life to produce positive energy, it's just not possible. And, you know, th there's all these new age ways of trying to produce positive energy, but when we are in a very turbulent stage in our life, it's impossible to create these. We might trick ourselves into believing that we're creating positive energy, but, you know, if something makes you f is making you feel extremely sad, pressurized, or under stress, mm -hmm. Well, then you're you are in a in a point where you're bound to create negative energy. And if there is somebody else in the house, an awful lot of negative energy, you you get this kind of homogenization of energies. I believe. And look, these are just my theories on it. I mean, it's, some, it's something that's always intrigued me is the poltergeist activity. You know how it's usually only really affects like a girl. For instance, I've, I've heard in some cases with boys, but more, as you know, Jenny, young girls are 
different. They're giving off a lot of weird energy and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, this is what I was talking to somebody the other day about this. I mean, when have you ever heard a ghost killing someone in a house? Obviously, you're going to get like, demonic attachments, right? And then you've got the you've got the, you've you've got the problem and maybe that person getting like uh, possessed. Have you ever came across people that you think might be possessed? Oh. <laughs> Um, I've come across people I think that are possessed, but it, it wasn't yeah. uh, it, it wasn't in the pursuit of investigating paranormal. But I, yeah. I, I, I have come across certain people uh, in life that I feel may have possession. Yeah, yeah. And I, I suppose too, what we have to bear in mind, uh, you know, if someone does have a demonic possession going on uh they're not likely to pick up the phone and ring and look for help are they like i mean they're, mm -hmm. they're content with the situation because that's that's part of the game that they're meant to be playing isn't it this is it's moving yeah. towards the end game after what on what's after possession yeah yeah i mean yeah. i've heard I've, i mean obviously i know people in the chat and there's there's people i'm friends with that they do like exorcisms on a real good basis and it is true look the facebook user says there real possession is extremely extremely Aye. rare but you do get run the risk of getting attachment which is no it's kind of still, still doing the same line as a, a, a possession but it's an attachment that's maybe latched onto you in like a haunted location where it's maybe you've been young you've been stupid you've been playing with the ouija board in a graveyard or something stupid like that and it's it's seen you it's attached itself to it's latched itself onto you and then basically you're going through i've met people that have been that have had attachments and they've been so depressed really depressed and it was feeding it was feeding off them but when they got like that attachment removed for like an exorcist or whoever the, the their lives just totally changed their life's just totally bent in a better direction. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, d definitely, uh, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't I, think you even have to go to a haunted location. No, I don't. To think get so. you know negative yeah. energy or attachments, like you can go to your your auntie's house that might be, or your granny's house that might be very negative all the time, and you come back and you're feeling like shit. And it's mm. going on for days and days, and you know, you say, you know, the, the, the energies after change and within me. And I was somewhere a couple of weeks ago, and um, I just I came home and I said, I, I feel really faint, and this went on for a couple of days, so I had to get a chain to do a bit of the clearing on me, but tell them what happened when yeah. you did it so yeah well like firstly you have to understand natalie it's absolutely out of light of the laws anyhow but uh the, the <laughs> thing about it is that when when i assisted natalie when she felt that she had an attachment i could i could physically feel pinpricks on my, on my fingers afterwards like if it was trying to hurt me now my theory um, red mark yeah, I have marks mark on his... that you have to go to outside at all to pick up an attachment. I think, but I, I do think what is the precursor for it is you need to be brought lower to a position that, for want of a better word, magnetizes you. And now this attachment, it has it, it has a way. And I, I, so I believe that you can get an attachment in Tesco in the queue. Yeah. If it, waiting to pay for your bread, if you have been lowered to a particular vibrational level earlier on that day by a, an individual or a, a scenario or a situation, so I, I believe that attachments are very predatorial, and I believe that for a particular energy, and once they see that, I think that they're drawn to that as a, in, a, in a magnetic fashion. In the same way that if you look at historically evil people. Uh, before before social media, evil people had a way of finding one another 
and, and to to to, to uh, continue their evil activities together yeah. at, at, a, at an accelerated pace than they would do individually. Like you mean, Maura Hindley and Ian Brady or whatever. Yeah. That's a prime example of that. Yeah. And you know, look look yeah. at pedophile things or whatever. Before yeah. there was any social media, Facebook, yeah. WhatsApp groups, etc., yeah. etc. Et you 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 find all, all of them, groups of people that were able to find one another and abuse children and you know that yeah. that's a fact so yeah. if that can happen while the energy is within our body why can it not happen when the energy we have died and left the energy has left our body as we say what that is the first first uh, rule of um thermodynamics when that energy leaves your body why can it not continue and, uh, and do such acts exactly Exactly. And I know people say, and you, when you go to locations and you respect the location, and of course, and you respect the spirits and so on and so on. And I do believe in that. I really do. Um, but when, the, when you have to talk facts and you have to talk history, I will ask the question, like in, in, when I'm in Hellfire Club and I did say what I said, what I said, and I, you know, it's, it's facts. Um, that do you ever find like if the spirits are really like assholes when they're alive when you go to locations like people say you go with respect would you respect them or would you kind of talk to them if as if they were alive sorry you broke up there, but I, I I think what you're saying there is would you respect them or would you, would you not respect them if they're an arsehole in life? And I believe, yeah, I believe the energy when it leaves this body, uh, I believe that if, if you get an arsehole in life or, or mm. and the energy leaves this body, they are now still an arsehole. The only thing now is because the energy has left this vehicle, it, it mm. has uh, the benefit of being an, ar an invisible arsehole. And, and what type of an arsehole could that be? Do you know what I mean? So now they, nobody sees them being an arsehole. So um, my thinking on that is I respect all energy matters that respect me. If it disrespects me, I'm not going to give it any respect. Why should I? I am so it's like that, that. I wouldn't treat them any different than I would if they were human. I am so like that. And I and people think, oh, Jenny, you shouldn't have. When I did say about, you know, the gentleman's club, and I used the word gentleman very loosely because you're nothing mm. but anything but a gentleman and that's when they're at. and that's just stating facts so people say oh you can't say that you must respect well i'm sorry but yeah i don't go in arms blazing but i don't go in like a little angel and say oh you know you're dead you know yeah. and, and also what we're Well, well, what we have to remember too with these energies, uh, if you have a, a, an energy that's disrespecting you in such a fashion, if you still show that respect, you 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 are impairing this energy now to to continue yeah. on it. It's 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 line of of bullying you for want of a better word. You can't can't have mm. that. You, you know you you know regardless of whether it's a physical energy or a metaphysical energy, we still have the right. To our own personal integrity, and I would tell you, always maintain your own personal integrity. And do you know what? Your instinct will never let you down. Don't forget about your instinct. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have all these gadgets that we bring, thermal gadgets and SLS cameras and this box and that box and blah blah blah. Yeah. And, and we are overlooking our instinct. We have an innate ability to understand what is dangerous in our environment. It's 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 entwined. It's interwoven in our DNA. Uh, you know, that's why we're here today. And never overlook that that's it and like you were saying shane about instinct and i know go ahead Nat. no sorry sorry it's just it's the lag it's the seven second lag it's like crossing over each other no but i was just saying like I, i've never been scratched or pushed in um the hellfire um now i've been pushed in left but the only other place the only place that i've ever been scratched is this um this house that we went to see that we were thinking of buying of partially derelict but um 
we went in and Shane got a horrible feeling and he doesn't really, you don't really get many, many feelings. No, I, I, like, I mean, but... and I said to people before, and I always say this, I'm not a sensitive person, but I, I don't think open feelings and vibes or anything like that. Uh, the, the only place that I have ever gone that I've really got a bad vibe was, was Massey's Woods. But this house that we were going to look at, it was an old farmhouse. And it, 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 I, I'm not going to say I got a bad vibe, but it was a bit weird and, and it was a bit strange. And like, you know, it's a house that you're looking at from outside and you're going, yeah, I don't want to buy this place. And then you go into it and you go, I don't want to buy this, you know, and you're kind of, uh, but yeah, it's the same house. But once we went in there, it was, it, it was a very different. And um, I went to walk through a door and I busted my head off the top of the door and, and, and like I cut my head. I didn't, I ended up on the ground and then you got scratched as well. Yeah. In the same house. Oh, really? And I was scratched where I couldn't have been itching. Like it was, yeah, I had like tight jeans on it, and there was all, like all scratches on my legs and across my mm. stomach. Mm. Yeah, we just felt that maybe whoever used to own it that had passed over, they just maybe didn't want anybody buying it. They just wanted it left because it was theirs maybe something like that but. And, and you know isn't it plausible to think somebody could have lived in a farm and spent their whole life there mm. reared their family there and decided mm -hmm. you know when, when they've given up this but that they want that they don't want to leave that they're still happy there i mean they don't want somebody else coming in and like you know yeah. i think that's it's plausible to think that yeah they don't mm -hmm. Buying their house, <laughs> <laughs> you're investigators. I do you ever walk like I know when I drive by houses and so on, and I look at a house and I and I say, Oh, I, love, I, I could see myself living there, or I'd look at another house and I, I just get this my stomach drops, like I just get a bad feeling from the house. I've no idea why, it could be nothing wrong with it, but I just get an instant bad mm. feeling about any particular house, it can be any house. But there you go. That's where I live. Um, who is this? This is I don't know who this is. Facebook yeah. user. Uh, uh, I think that there's an element there too. Of... Go ahead. So did someone there do I pick up on stuff on Charleville in the library? Like to be honest, I don't really pick up on anything anywhere. Like, I mean, I, 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 I don't get feelings. I'm not psychic. I'm not uh, anything like that. And I, I, I genuinely don't get bad feelings. The only place that I've ever, and I, I sound like a broken record now, but the only place that I've ever really got a bad feeling on is Massey's Woods. That is the only place in all the years I've been investigating. Now, um, like, I mean, even that house where we got those really strange EVPs, uh, I didn't feel anything in the house. I actually thought it was quite a nice house and I thought it was very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. The thing about it is um, I don't have to get those feelings because uh, I I just have to investigate the place. I don't have to get, I don't have to be a psychic because that's not, not what I'm presenting myself as. I am just trying to determine if, the, if there is an organic reason for these things that could be happening. And if not, let's have an investigation and let's see what we can I have to be honest with you now, uh, out of, if I've done a, a hundred private investigations, I would say 95 of them have been as a res direct result of substance abuse or some sort of mental health issue. That's yeah. to be honest, like, you know, a lot of people tell you to the country. That's my experience. Mm -hmm. But the 5% yeah. that hasn't been, you know, you got to bed at night. I've ca I've came across that. I've came across people that are convinced. They're convinced that their house has got a demonic demon in it. And I've said to them, I says, listen, I says, if your house has got a demon in it, you will know that your house has got a demon in it. And I says, what's happening? Oh, I see a strange shadow. And I'm like, that's that could be anything. That could just be the light. It could be. It, you might just have a friendly spirit in your house for all you know. Oh, it's a demon. It's a demon. And I've tried and I've tried to explain to these people that demons are very, very rare, especially in houses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I it, I will say this, sir. I will say this. Yeah. I, have I, I agree with you. They're very, very rare. And you won't, yeah. you won't be. 
I was just going to say that I have uh, not uh, me personally. But I, have, I, I have found, like, I mean, <laughs> I just used to a cross. And... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mexican standoff. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say. Oh. I know. <laughs> Okay, Shane, you talk. When you go, Shane, you shot. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I believe that if you if you, you have something that is like in your house, I agree with you entirely, Chris. You, you mm. do not you do not need that you have something demonic in your in your house because it would be very, very apparent and it's very, very rare. Um what like in one of the points in some of the houses that we have investigated in, where, where, where you go to a house and someone tells you that they're a devout yet they have started reading Bible and stuff like that. These are very big indicators that something nasty is in the house. But to be honest with you, um, I, you know, I've only ever come across one person that I believe is demonically possessed. And like I said, that, that individual... Uh, has never asked me for help or anything like that, but I I do, do believe that person has something very very dark within them. No. But you know, uh, th there can be a kind of a symbiotic relationship between someone that is demonically possessed the, if if the character is suitable to that demon. I believe you know, and and he seems to be doing okay with it. Really, Jesus, I will. I don't know who it is. Um, I will say, I will say, I have encountered people that have met that do exorcisms. They've told me that they do exorcisms. They are like pastors and stuff like that. They do work for the church. That's what they do. They go down people's houses and they they work for the church and they basically cleanse houses and stuff. But I was actually having a conversation with one one day, and they says he actually says to me, he says, in his lifetime doing this, he's maybe. In his lifetime, out of like maybe 40 years of doing exorcisms, he's maybe came across maybe 18 demonic hauntings, right? And the rest has been and the rest has been like just pissed off spirits, like twisted souls. You know where I'm going with this, Shane. Yeah, ever came across like not a demon, but a twisted soul, because twisted souls don't yeah. live by the rules that the demons live by. Because demons have to follow a certain code, whereas twisted souls can do what they want. Mm. Yeah, they're they're they're, they're anarchists. Yes. Mm. So, like, the, the thing about it is that um, I suppose when we go in to, to investigate a private house, it's mm. it's um, it, it's vital that we're honest and we, we do it with proper integrity because the consequences and it's it's no longer about uh, likes or clicks or anything like that on facebook it is you know generally not with someone out in a bad situation and yeah. it, it's very very important because you know uh, by the time somebody rings someone like me and natalie or whatever uh, any other demonologist or our, our serious investigative team for a private case uh, mm -hmm. that person is at the end uh, of their rope at that stage you know what i mean and they need help and you know sometimes um it it, it can be enough to go in and validate what's happening Mm -hmm. so that they stop yeah. thinking that they're going off the trolley completely you know, and try yeah. and create some sort of a way out of this you know but th th a lot of people are very very panic stricken at this stage and it's trying to get them to, to relax and to understand that although something is in their house mm -hmm. we don't know what it is yet it's still your house and like we spoke earlier about you know uh, coming across an energy that's disrespectful or whatever and showing it respect mm -hmm. you you now have to be the doorman of you uh, or door person of your house the bouncer of your house yeah. and take control back of your home and mm -hmm. and empower yourself yes. because whatever is there um it's going to prey on weakness that's what i'm looking for it's looking for weakness yes yeah 
because they know I, I know I did one private home twice and the owner was sent and stuff and so on and so on and we did get some audio we did get EVPs of who they the owner didn't um know why they would be there but then you know Lou went back and did all the home the homework and the land and the names of the people who lived on that land before so it's not always connected to the per the people in the house um I I always say like I I've done two private homes but I always tell them at the beginning you know uh that we are there to help them if there's anything in your house we didn't bring anything with us we're not creating anything there you called us to go and do your home I, I sometimes I'd be very declined to do private houses because of, I don't know if somebody would kind of think that you brought something with you or you conjured something up and I'm like Jesus Christ I don't have time or patience for this mm -hmm. so I've done two I've done two private homes I, I liked I liked the second one the first one was very sensitive, very sensitive. So I wasn't too comfortable doing that house. But the second house was 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 good. We're still going over the work for that. Hmm. Yeah, like, and the reality is there's always a great risk when you're going to do these houses because you don't really know it's usually a respondent from an email or a facebook message or something like that and and you don't really know what what you're getting yourself into uh, as as an investigator and um, mm -hmm. like you don't know what you're going to uh, meet when you get to the door of that house because you know i've come across people that are you know suffering severely with mental health and mm -hmm. there's nothing going on in the house at all yeah uh, and they're seeing manifestations in front of my eyes and 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 you know they're they're becoming aggressive and now you know they want to try and get aggressive with you or whatever and I, i've had occasions like this um now uh if you were like i mean i suppose i'm pretty good at, at dealing with aggression i'm, I'm highly qualified yeah. at that but mm -hmm. if you were a person that maybe wasn't you could be in trouble with stuff like that so i it's very very important that you know people that are doing privates that they exercise uh, uh, enough caution for scenarios like that you know i i, I mean yeah you're, you're going to come across with people you're going to come across in your time to time through your life doing investigations you are going to come across people with schizophrenia that see things that see they're like, oh my god, there's a ghost in the corner and it's it's got yeah. an axe and it's chasing after me and, and you're like and you're like, there's nothing here, there's nothing we've went through your house, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. But they they're convinced, they're convinced that there's a man with an axe chasing them up and down their house. But really they're really needing to go to the doctor or like a psychiatrist and maybe get something to help them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like I mean, that's I, I I've often seen that case. It's scenario private cases, but mm. you know we still keep going in in the hope that yeah. there's somebody out there that that is in a genuine situation that can be helped. And you know yeah. we we have helped a good few people along the way, and that's that, that's what keeps you going with stuff like this yeah. uh, when it comes to privates because it it's. Uh, like I said, it's 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 not an ego fuel thing because it's never broadcasted on pages or anything like that. You're doing mm -hmm. tru truly for the good of, of trying to help someone. And like I said, sometimes you know I I believe that you know we've gone and done houses where there's really nothing going on, and you know to be honest with the people and tell them that there's nothing going on sometimes changes their whole outlook on the home, and you get a call from a couple of weeks later and they're going. Everything's fantastic and everything is grand and blah blah blah. And yeah. it's grateful that someone came there and and uh, took their opinion seriously enough that you would conduct some sort sort of an investigation to try and determine if something's there. And and if if there was nothing uh, in an organic fashion causing this and taking mm. any type of psychotropics or you know uh, mental health uh, yeah. drugs. 
that yep. you can sit down and have a chat with him and go, look, I, I genuinely don't think there's anything going on here, but I can understand why you're concerned, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that's enough to help people. So it doesn't always have to be a, a case where you're, 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 you're cleansing a house and getting rid of something. It, it, I, I'm quite happy uh, to go in again and say it as it is because at the end of the day I think that this is a big problem with the realm of paranormal investigation. There are too many people using it as a pedestal for their own ego. Uh, I don't know whether they were bullied at school or whatever went on, but they're they're using this as a pedestal for their own ego. But the, the problem is yep. the consequences and the repercussions uh, is felt throughout the entire paranormal world where there are very genuine paranormal investigators. Mm-hmm. It's rare. It's rare. You'll get some, like you were saying, you get some fantastic, genuine investigators, uh, and you'll get some that will just tell the people what they want to hear because they don't want to tell them, like, you know, there's nothing really here going on, and they don't want to talk about mental health. So, yeah. it, 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 mm-hmm. you have it. to, you have to remember, uh, to and I find there is a lot of something that works uh, very well. No, when you go. Mm. Oh, sorry, I put that when back up. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> when you go, Shane. Mm. I find, um, you know. When you go, I think there's enough of a delay. When you go, Shane, you please t- do tell. Have we lost them? Are you frozen? Oh, you're back. You blinked. Yeah, I, I find <laughs> what works extremely well uh, for us when we go to do the initial interview uh, with people. So we, you, you knock on the door and you go, and you've never met this person in the mm. uh, uh, mm in your life before they've never met you and you know it's it's a tricky topic to start discussing so we go in and they see this guy he's a he's a biker dude covered in tattoos they they relax it's much easier to talk to someone like that and going well look what what kind of drug are you taking on you know what what what, what are you into like and they, they don't read it as being judgmental you know whereas i think you know maybe if you are arrived at the house like a tax inspector with a briefcase they're not going to tell you you know they're going to feel like to this guy mm-hmm. uh, and did, that has worked wonders for us along the way so very quickly you can reach a point where people trust you and they go okay this guy he's judging me he just needs to know so we can move forward and and that's it because you know you have sensitive subjects and you know, uh, you try and do it in as a, as delicate a fashion as you can. But at the end of the day, you have to cover the subjects. Yes, yeah. I agree. Just look at this. Power of suggestion is one of the best tools you can use in a large number of cases, as a simple positive mm. suggestion from an outside source is enough to rid a house of a spirit. Uh, it looks like the screen is lagging a wee bit. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Um, I was gonna, because I know when we go on investigations, yeah, we use, the we use yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Are we frozen? Oh, no, no you're good. Like okay, good, good, good. Yeah, I was just putting this one back up again. The power of suggestion is one of the best tools you can use. Not sure of cases. Mm. Um, so I was talking about I was talking about equipment, um, and I I know like we my favorite piece of equipment. So is the, the power of. <laughs> Machine, please, please. Go ahead. The, the power of suggestion. It's a double-edged sword, the power of suggestion. The problem is with the power of suggestion, if, if, if you have someone that's investigating there, and the problem is, and you 
involved seeing it with paranormal investigators where they're so enthusiastic they want to believe that there's a ghost in there or whatever mm. and uh, mm. they've already been affected by the power of suggestion of the person that caught them there so they're almost believing that there's going to be a ghost there before or a spirit or an entity or whatever you want to call it before they get there so f for me uh What's really, really important in a, in a case like that is, and I do agree that the power of suggestion is, is, is a very potent thing, but to, to empower the people that you go to see, to, so to allow them to understand that they, it's their home and they're, they, yes. they have the energy, the, 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 and I know it is an additional energy, and they have to take control of that house. So I think empowering is really really important you know and like i said the, that is why the, the it's so important that when a team goes to a private investigation that they have to understand that it's not shits and giggles and that the consequences of mm -hmm. writing something down as being paranormal too soon can be a problem and i always say you know uh, the evidence it's okay to be uh, skeptical because if the evidence is good enough it'll stand up and you know, I say skeptical, not cynical, but just allow the evidence to present itself. And if it's there, it'll stand up. And then you know what you're dealing with. But yeah, the, the worst thing that can happen is that myself and Natalie go to a house. We t we speak to a lady that thinks something has happened, and now we're, we're buying into this because we we want a paranormal experience. And mm -hmm. there's three people believing in something that hasn't been properly investigated. Yeah, like that, yeah. That's a, a terrible. Mm -hmm. It's like a cop arriving on the scene deciding who it, it, it is before they start investigating. Now, we all know that, that has happened as well, but it's not the correct way to conduct an invasion. Yeah. I, will say, I, will, I will say there has been investigators out there that all they are really caring about is views. That's all they care about is views on YouTube. They want to become the next Zach Bagans. They want to try and fake things. Because there is, let's face it, there, there is, there, there's loads of them out in the YouTube community. And the, this is what you need to avoid. MD that's getting, like, you think there's a spirit in your house. Do not yeah. invite somebody that you do not know, like a team like that, that are going to come in. And all they're going to do is just, at the start off, they're just going to start calling it names. They're going to try and pass it off. And their main goal is to get views and clicks. Because they're they're going to go home to a nice friendly environment. Okay, and they're going to go home. They're not caring about that. They're just making their money on YouTube. Be mm. very careful who you pick to go to your house. Research yeah. them first before mm. you allow everybody in. It's, I don't yeah. get it personally. I see these people on YouTube. They'll get into a location, and as soon as they're in the door, they'll start screaming and shouting profanely words against the spirits and calling them all the names under the sun and saying that you're... I, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And I think, what's your advice on that kind of thing, Shane? No, and, and that, that really, really irritates me because the problem is, what we have to understand is that there are human people that are involved in the middle of this that are having bad issues. And like any profession, don't you have a duty of care to the individuals that have called you out? And like, I mean, I have no time for power tricks when it comes to stuff like this. I am um, also a, a martial arts instructor and I teach people self-defense techniques that are solid and robust because I know that the people that are coming to my classes may need to go out on the street and use them some night to get home safe to their family. Yeah. So yes. it's it's not the time for the, the Hollywood Bruce Lee kicks. I have to teach them stuff that they can do on a slip, slippery surface, and there's no second take in these scenarios. And we have to understand that what we see on TV is fundamentally different to what we really do in in life and it's it's it's, it's the same across the board whether it's uh, paranormal investigating sport or, or whatever you know tv is a it's a whole separate world and it, you know it's dedicated for the purpose of the largest possible viewership that's what all tv is always about we have done that. I. yeah just make sure you hear me okay I know, like I was talking about equipment earlier on, 
And like I was saying, I love the the uh, the recorder, the digital recorder and the video. You have the recorder as well and, and you do audio. What was your best piece of audio that you've ever had? I think you were saying something about it, Shane, earlier. One of the best pieces of audio that you've ever had. Oh, well, well uh, in my in my thinking, the best piece of audio that we ever recorded was on that private head with, with the little Bichon Feast dog. Like, I mean, that, that audio uh, was just absolutely incredible. Like, I mean, the, the only way I could describe it is effectively that dog yelp was beside the task camp. It wasn't a faint in the distance kind of thing. You know, wh when we listened to that EVP, I know Natalie initially listened to it, but when we listened to that EVP, what we, what we found staggering was why did we not hear the dog when we were talking to the lady and having the interview because it was it was part of uh, the furniture for want of a better word it was yeah. it, it wasn't anything that was faint or distant it was it was part of the interview mm. well and the one up in the hellfire as well yeah would you well it's the one up in the hellfire too jenny um yeah. and chris it was um you know get out you could hear it Clear's Day, that was another one. <coughs> and um, that one. Oh, yeah, there was uh, one in Charleville Castle as well. What you get in you there? You know, when, a, when you're, you're listening to an EVP, sometimes there's like a buildup of energy. Mm -hmm. And I it's like it's a win to take it across and it, it's, it's the voice is coming mm -hmm. just frozen though it's the, the energy the way it kind of portrays and this is from Charleville Castle <laughs> I know it's kind of it's yeah. like freezing sometimes, and this is oh, so yeah. this is from and, and yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah. Charleville Castle, um, Natalie. They said, but I al always felt that it was like um, Harriet's sister, Emily, the older sister. Okay. Oh wow. That's how oh, I felt wow. it was, but um I love yeah, childhood. And other things happened like in the hellfire. Yeah, we love it, don't we? Yeah. We've been a couple good. of times. But um another time in the hellfire we had like about um we were with I'd say about sixteen or seventeen people and we broke into two. Okay. One upstairs, one section downstairs and we could hear thump, thump, thump off the side of the building and it was captured and they played it back the next day and they could hear it and then that was totally just wiped from yeah, there was, this, everybody heard it to say thump 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 doesn't really uh give it justice like i mean it, it sounded as if somebody was hitting the sidewall uh, of uh, the Hellfire Club, so the wall opposite the entrance with a sledgehammer. That's what it sounded like. Um, it, 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 it wasn't a case where you needed, uh, you know, to break down the EVP or something like that to hear right. it. And it was, it was audible. It was really, really loud. Like I mean, it was as if someone was standing out, so had a sledgehammer and and hit it off the off the side oh, of the wall wow. as hard as they could swing it three times. Mm oh my god yeah. it wasn't bangers or no nothing nothing anybody shooting out mm. banging yeah and you know that back room you know on the when you're downstairs and you walk up the first flight of stairs and there's there's a back room there and i've been told that nobody likes that room nobody likes that area at all and there was 666 written on the wall and I, I have to say, it's probably the only room I'm, I'm most comfortable in. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. But I don't know why. Did you ever feel uncomfortable in that back room, the one that people do not like? And I don't know why. Hello? 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 Hello?
How did you find it? Were you comfortable yeah, in it? Well, we've heard growls mm. in there. Um, and also mm. that I think was the room that was blocked up. And when it was reopened, like a couple of years after, I don't know how many years, maybe decades. Yeah. Um, they found a lot of satanic grimoires and stuff, I think. Mm. Or so at least so the story goes, anyhow. That's the back. That's on. That's, that's on the first. But I'm um, talking about like haunted. Sorry. Yeah. The first flight of stairs on the back. The yeah, little, it's kind of the smallest one. Yeah, it's the small one. Yeah, there's... and it's it's probably the one that I'm most comfortable in. The one with the six 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 is actually up on the top floor. But the, the first flight and the first room in front of you when you walk up that flight of stairs is the one that the room that I like. Probably don't know why, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Were you, was it you, was it the two years that was there one night? Oh, was it, was it another team, another Sharon, that there, there was people standing on the roof? Was it yourselves that was there one night and they were standing on the roof? Yeah, but we, we've been there a couple. Of, yeah, we've been there a couple of nights where people were on the roof. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I remember standing yeah. in the house. It's quite own. an old rave site, anyhow. Quite frequent. It is. I was looking at videos of it on YouTube a few days ago. Um, I remember standing in the Hellfire Club on my own. And um, I was on the second, no, I was in the top floor. I was on the top floor. And the people I was with went down the field, further afield, you know, and left me standing in the Hellfire Club on my own on the top floor, you know, that arched window. And I was standing there kind of like, come on, come back, come back, come back, come back. And then I realized then Jeez. I'm standing in Hellfire Club on my own and I'm a woman. And <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, and I, like I said, I looked the, over out the window to see how high the jump would have been if I had to jump out. I was going to walk down the stairs, but then if anything happened, I'd have to walk by the room. And you know, when you feel like running up the stairs, when you're turning the lights off, I kind of do something like that, that I'd run down the stairs. And those steps are not the most friendliest. And I probably would have taken two or three flights down in one go. <laughs> so I stayed where I was. It was out of flight. And um, I, I stayed. I stayed in the spot and then I kind of called out questions afterwards when they came back. Um, I remember investigating there with a team from Chicago. It was kind of called the, the women's club, and then the men weren't invited anymore. But you have to, you know, ask permission to come into the health club. You know, that's the kind of questions that you don't ask. That's probably why they told me the F two, which is probably you know they they probably wouldn't have a you know, <laughs> But I do. But I've never been to Massey's Woods. But I really do want to go to Massey's Woods. I have to try it out. I have to mm. see what it's like. Mm. I've never been to it. Um, it well, it's a strange place. Not to go there, but... I'm going to go. I will, I will say this is something that's always intrigued me, and it's about, it's about voice recorders. It's something about voice recorders. I'll, I'll ask you, actually, Shane, this is actually an interesting question. You'll be at a location. Right, and you'll get your task, you'll get your voice recorder out, and you'll hear a scream right in your ear, but then you'll go to play it back, and the voice recorder will not have picked it up. But then you'll go into another room and you'll do an EVP session, you'll no hear nothing, but then you'll listen back, and there'll be like a scream on your voice recorder, but you never heard it. What, what do you think that is? How do you think that? How do you think the sound waves are working that way? Jane? Yes, I'm here. Are oh, you asking me? Oh, no, Shane. I'm asking Shane. I'm asking Shane. I said that to Shane. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like that that's something that has puzzled me, <laughs> um, you know, uh, so many times. And uh, like, I mean, another one that I find very, very puzzling is when you're making an EVP, uh, say, like we had in that house that we're doing the private in, and 
like there's three people here and they hear a loud noise it's audible yeah and it never appears on the evp like yes. it's very very hard to try and figure out how that can be happening um you, you know, and it it just makes me wonder like i mean how much uh research and further investigation has to go into what is unseen and what is unheard mm -hmm. yes yep because you will hear kind of it like, with your ears and it won't come out yeah yeah that's the kind of best ones that's like the creme de la creme i remember sitting here one night it was probably two o'clock in the morning and you know jenny had you know a gin and tonic or a glass of wine really so i got brave at probably two in the morning and i got brave so i took the recorder out and i was in the house by myself and i was calling out for the man that's in my house i, said, I know you're here i've seen you i've heard you i know you're here who are you and and so on mm -hmm. then i heard jenny and i was sitting on the couch back there and it was on the left side of me like not beside me or a little bit taller I heard my name, Jenny, Jenny. And then I, you heard me saying on the recording, did you say something? Were you trying to say something to me? But I have it on the recording as well. So I have the DVP and the EVP, which is rare to get. No, I'm not saying it's rare to get. It, you do get it, but it, it, does, it does happen. And then save, we listen to an amazing piece of audio. You go back to listen to it again and it's gone. That really annoys me. But we don't know why they they just erase themselves. Drives me insane. But as it as it as it yeah. they were raising just yeah, as and, it they and, and that does happen. <laughs> when you go, Shane. Mm, that does happen, like, and another strange anomaly that we have experienced doing private cases and like I, i'm terribly interested in the psychology of people anyhow but this is a really strange anomaly where we go we get a we get a phone call or we get an email about a house we go to investigate as, as a potential private case we're told what's happening and we go in and we take a few photographs or whatever and then we realize uh, lo and behold upon investigation that the people that have brought us there uh, are charlatans and they want to try and purposely catch us out so the, you know they're, they're doing something for us to try and validate what they're experiencing hoping that we would validate it and then when we don't validate it they're pushing forward further to try and uh prompt us to validate it because they're actually trying to catch us out and i don't know whether it's something that they want to do then call us out on uh, uh, social media or whatever because they have falsified this yeah. But this is a phenomenon. Mm. I don't know why they do that. Oh, this was Lulu. I remember I could hear this growl noise at Lep Castle when I turned. When I turned it, when the doors shut, I remember that. But strangely, the growl had never came through the camcorder. At least I caught the doors. I remember that in the day we had finished with Redwood Castle and then we moved over to Lep Castle. Uh, I find Lep Castle is an amazing location. I find it very, uh, the second floor, very malevolent, the banquet room. I do not like it. I do not like it. I get very, um, I have a piece of a recorder from that banquet room that is amazing. I even have one of the names. The name was given on the piece of audio. And it, it has never gone up and it won't be going up. Um, but working on that, and I know when I went back again and I said, I called her name out and I said, we heard you and so on. And um, I said, what can we do? You know, you sounded tired, you sounded this and that. And I could hear her help Jenny three times while I, while I was talking. So we're back again in mm -hmm. January. And um, there's, I, I wish I lived closer to it. I'd probably be in it every week. There's a lot, I tell you, there's a lot to Lep Castle. There's a lot to Lep Castle. It's it's just kind of, it's like I always call it like the jigsaw puzzle, even though we know the history of it. But I always say not every name is written in history. And this is why I like to kind of repetitively do locations. It's so you can build up a story that has never been told. So this woman's name that was mentioned in Lep Castle, nobody knows it. And and that I keep, I keep calling her name out when I'm there. Uh, but I don't like the banquet room. 
It has someone in my kitchen. So, uh, I know yeah, we have the time. In the banquet room. I, 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 of Say that again, Matt. And it was in the banquet room where we were sitting at the table and something pushed my leg because I had them crossed. And they say um, that it's the govern governess, you know, the one that used to look after the children. Um, yes. I felt it was just her telling me not to cross your legs, be a lady. Mm -hmm. You know, I got that kind of feeling off it. But um, yeah, like, I think Sean Ryan I was saying he hears like a scream and it's a big yeah. long scream like it's being cut off but yeah. um the red lady apparently she was she was stabbed to death and so was her baby I don't know yes. whether she was uh raped or whatever but uh, she got mm -hmm. pregnant and she had the baby and the baby was stabbed and then she was murdered so that said i'm sure you know it's, the it's probably for maybe that they're they're here and, and i always kind of call out for mildred darby as well yeah yes yeah, yeah she would be her a lot um and you know what i'd love i'd love to know where um the, the tree cartload of bones where where they've actually and been buried those people you know yeah where are they buried I and that. i'd like to go and visit did you see that in the show last night that they got it into the oubliette they got it into it i'm a little jealous i want to get into it yeah i want to get into it you put me in there and lock me away shut the door let me in, Jenny. There's no door. There is no door. It's just a hole, and you're put into it. That's that. That's that. So, uh, no. Uh, this is Lulu. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I, I could hear two knocks when listening back to recordings when we were at the Hellfire Club and a door being shut. Strange stuff. Sh shame about the rain that night, but I'd say you would get some great movie. We're still going through that. I was at the Hellfire Club. I'm everywhere. We're away next weekend. Oh. We're away next weekend. Uh, I got her when we did the Estes Met. Now it was funny enough that when we did a live and in, in, in Hellfire Club, and it worked perfectly later on in that night. But we did get our email at the Estes Method, and uh, and when we were up there in the Bloody Chapel, and Brian, Brian came through. I think Brian was from the north. <laughs> Brian was a bit of a crack, actually, in, in the bloody chapel. We don't know who he is, but he had a northern accent. Mm. Yeah, we don't know who he was. Don't know who, but we're back in Left Castle now in, the, in January. <laughs> we, have, we have a guest joining us from America. Um, thank you, Liz. Thank you. But, yeah, we have to find out who Brian is. I have to look over that live again, Lulu. But we are away next weekend. I will say this Leap Castle is a, an amazing castle. I mean, I watched obviously you were in it last night. I watched it, and I, I actually the, I, the history of that place is ridiculous. I mean, the battles that's took place there yeah. is yeah. bad. I mean, and it's it's like that torture chamber, that torture chamber. To think what happened to the people that were in there. There were spikes at the bottom of it, so the yeah. people thrown in. And then, you know, but when it got mm. full and whatnot and the spikes were covered and then people were just thrown in on top. And I think someone, I think it was mentioned that someone was just, if you're going to drop me in, drop me in on my head. Just so they don't, um, this was mentioned, I think, on the show last night, drop me in on my head so they don't have to stop suffer too long. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what we could do? We're back in January, but I will probably, obviously I will call out and uh, ask, yeah. you know, can you tell me where the bones are? Can you tell yeah. me where you have been buried? Yeah, tell me where you've been buried and could it be in the field or in the land close. I don't know. You've got to remember in their days they didn't really care. They just dug a hole and threw you into it. It could be anywhere. 
could be in the Rosebush Garden for all you, for all you know. The Rosebush Garden. It's, I, I mean, I, I must admit, I've looked at the Yeah, but, but, but it's my understanding that the cartload of horses, uh, the, the three cartloads of bones was brought out in, uh, I think, 1932. Wow. So there must be some historical trail to where the, the, yes. those three cartloads. I'll see if I can research that and see what we can find. Yeah, I know. And I'll be on bloody Google later now looking for work. No, but I, don't Google. <laughs> I don't think Google's going to tell you. <laughs> there, will be, there will be record there. If they were taken out around about 1930s, there will be a record there because they would have got a priest in to do like a blessing. So I bet you the church, I bet you the the church, the local church in the area will have a record of where they are buried. Where is the local church? Oh, that's easy. You just go and Google it and Google Earth and then just look about yeah. it. Tell you I was looking up last night where Yeah, let's look that up, Louise. Let's, let's all Google it tonight. We'll be lying in our beds. He's buried nearby. So. Say that again, Matt? No, I was just looking up uh, where Jonathan Darby I was buried, um, and it was a, a local graveyard. So, wow, that's yeah. places that we've, yeah. we've we've never been to. We'd go straight down to that castle to find some yeah. records on it. Because yeah, that's it. I think I would look that up because we'd always kind of go straight down to Lep Castle, mm -hmm. but I'd like to go and and visit. John's grave and look to see where those bones were buried. It'll be somewhere. Are you looking it up, Chris? <laughs> I'm actually I'm, I'm looking yeah. it up. I've been caught, I've been caught, I've been looking it up. Uh, I know I know where your phone is placed. I know where your phone is placed. <laughs> You're looking up it up. Um did you get it? No, I know. Yeah, I've no, I've no, I've no, I'm no, I'm no quack. I'm no quack. I, I'm a bit slow. I'll get there. Just keep asking questions, and I'll, I'll get there. I was going to ask you about, ask you about if there was anywhere in the world that you would could investigate, where would it be? It will go through. Am I frozen? So, no. oh, no. talking about like haunted objects, you know. Um, no, um, yeah, haunted objects. Uh, a friend of ours told us a funny story. You know, um, he bought this object in a charity shop, and real funny stuff started happening in his house. Uh, stuff was flying off the walls and he was actually, things were getting flung around the place. But um, he had bought this book, but he told you the story, didn't he, Shane? Yeah, so basically the book was, it, it, it seemed to have been bound in human skin. Oh, the Lord. So what did he bring into the priest yes. then, was it? Yeah. 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 He brought it to the priest and, and uh, I think to the house or whatever. The details are sketchy on because uh, I, I got the story on a couple of occasions. Like I got bits here and bits. I really wanted to relate the story, you know. So I got a little bit here and a little bit there. And uh, so as a result, the details are a little bit sketchy on it. The, the book that he bought had the effect of human skin. And he's said you know it was he couldn't read he didn't know what language it was in now uh, it, it was obviously some sort of grim war because uh the priest wanted to know where he came across and blah, blah, blah. oh gosh uh, so it's just an interesting story did he buy the... he bought this book in ireland did he Yeah. Knox Farm special. Oh. Mm. I don't know about that book. 
That's I, I've actually I had a quick look on there's nothing on uh would you call it Google? So Louise no. in the chat. The, you're not gonna you're not gonna find anything, but there is a local church nearby. Well, they say we'll just we'll just go into it. <laughs> there is a church nearby. Let me research that for you. And I'll Aye. see what I can find it because that's what I used to do for paranormal thing. I I used to research paranormal stuff, but I I will say that the the Leap Castle, the bones, whatever they are, they're somewhere. You should maybe try maybe get into that kind of chamber, get somebody brave enough to go in and sit in there and we have voice recorder and say it. Where where are you buried? Maybe that maybe they'll say out loud. I see there was a pocket watch found. And amongst the bones. I don't know where that is, though. So that's interesting. I'll see we'll if see I can find out what that is today. Aye. Um, I know when we say when we go back, we're going to get a recorder. And if we don't get into it, because normally there's birds in there nesting and they're protected, um, yeah. that we just get the recorder and, and put kind of tape, some uh, twine or whatever onto it and mm -hmm. lower it down into the oubliette and kind of call out questions from it. Mm. You know. You'll be fine. What are you talking about? I'll be fine. <laughs> we did, we did, we did, that, yeah. did you do that? Did you get anything? No. <laughs> no, but uh, one of the guys that was on the team, he jumped down into it and he actually jumped up on no. the roof of Lap Castle yeah. and he used to jump up onto the roof of um, the head. <laughs> yeah. Did he? Did he jump down? He was a little bit wild. <laughs> Did he jump down the yeah, Steve. Yeah, he did. He used yeah. to get up on top of the bloody chapel. Yeah, and up, like yeah, like he, a weasel. Yeah, he climbed up onto the battlements. On the outside, I was outside and I looked up and see him all around. Did he? Yeah. Crazy. I know when a few people, I was there with a few people, and this was up in the bloody chapel, and they climbed the wall to get onto, onto the roof. <laughs> oh. I couldn't do it. I'd get up, but I wouldn't let it get down. Here you go, Jenny. You'll just need to be brave. You can do in there. <laughs> well, I can climb the roof of the castle. <laughs> I can see you hiding on the roof. <laughs> My knees and back would not allow it. I would try though. I'll catch you, Jim. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll try. No. I can see it now in the Irish paper. Scottish man killed by falling ghost hunter. <laughs> really? I'll leave you there, perfect. I'll leave you there. I was asking you earlier on, guys, if you could investigate anywhere in the world, where would it be? You like that forest, don't you? Yeah, that forest in Romania. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can never remember the name of it. Hoyachaya mm. or something. Forest yeah. in Romania. Yeah, that's, that's there. Uh, yeah, I think that would be pretty interesting. I've heard, um, about, I've heard about that. I'd like to I'd like to go probably if I could and take photographs inside Amadeville House. Um, I'd like to take it series of photographs there yeah, yeah. Um, i think that would be pretty interesting uh i think that would be the the the, the probably yeah. my two favorite yeah. list you know where Ooh. would you like to go to where would what would your top of your where? bucket list be i've always said the vatican Ooh. yeah better start praying because you're not going to get in there anytime soon because again that's a very yeah. difficult place to get in i know i'd never get into it but i've always said the vatican i'd like to investigate in there yeah i would i would like to go to the paris catacombs yeah. that'd be a good place to look at the the what you say Chris, this one yeah the paris catacombs yeah the you know where the bodies are yes yes yeah. yes, yes. Yes, yeah, he did there. Good evening. Nope. Uh, yeah, uh, 
uh, Zach Bagans did in there. Um, did they get lost in that, in, in those uh, catacombs? Is that the one I'm mm. thinking of? They got lost, and there was a man in there as well. I the somebody stole their camera. Some they'd set up a camera, and somebody yep. stole their camera. For if, look, look, is Zach faking? As I call him, I, I wouldn't believe much that comes out for old Zachy. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but it's it's like I would say that like, obviously the Paris catacombs they don't let people in there for the simple reason as if you get lost in there, that's you. You've had it. You're lucky if they'll be found again. Ah, yeah, but, I think you'll get out. Ah, you get out. <laughs> Somehow, but you remember your GPS doesn't work in there. Just leave breadcrumbs. <laughs> Aye. Oh, the wee rats will come out in the what? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting it. I feel like I'm getting sick now and I'm getting kind of a chest infection starting again. Oh, God. I know, I know. I'm just looking at my dogs in the background, even my table. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what dogs do, especially puppies. I know, two of them here. I'm two of them here. Um, it's coming up to the two hour mark now. So we're going to wrap this up a little bit. Where can people find you on? Excuse me, I'm coughing there. Where can people find you if they want to look you up? <laughs> There's no fit delay. I know, I know. Yeah, so uh, Haunted Era on Facebook um, and Haunted Era on Instagram as well. So really, uh, Facebook is kind of the handiest to, to get. I'll put the link up after this. I want to talk to us about a, a private case or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. Natalie pretty much runs the page. I don't do anything on the page. Um, but I, I, Yeah. Uh, YouTube okay, too as well, Jenny. Yeah. yeah. Hi. We're on that. You're on. I will put the links up once we're finished here. I will get the links put up for you. Um, but I want to say thank you very much. I know there's a wee bit of delay, but I want to say thank you very much for coming on the show tonight. Thank you very much. Oh, no thanks for having us. Lovely at to meet you, thank too, you. Chris. Yep, no problem. Nice meeting you. We're back on again. Thanks for having us on. Let me hear. You're so welcome. Thanks for coming on. I know uh, it's it's been a long day, but thank you so much for coming on. I don't even know what time of the night it is anymore. I don't know what I don't have a clock. I mean, I don't have a clock in my house anymore. I must have climbed half past eleven at night. Oh, is it? Yes. Um, we're back on again tomorrow night. Yes, we are. We're talking about pets in the afterlife on the Bald and Bonkers. Jenny will be taking over as the host of Bald and Bonkers tomorrow night as Dakota is away to Orlando, or, or, can I kind of pronounce it, Orlando, Florida. Orlando. I'm stepping in for um for Dakota. Yeah. But we'll, vote, we'll also be back on Monday too for the new show too, but we can't talk about that just right, you know. No, I know, you know. I know. <laughs> We'll talk about it on Monday. Yeah, we'll do a new one on Monday and then one on tomorrow night. Um, oh, there's Anita. Hi, Anita. Yeah. So I'm going to bring us into the background. I'm going to bring the uh, intro on. Uh, I'm going to bring the is, is into the background. Uh, anyone See who liked, guys. watched, shared, commented, thank you yeah. so, so much. Uh, we should catch up. Anita. We should catch up. Anita. <laughs> Oh, nice chat. See you later. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.